In the last episode I didn't have time left for a few other methods in the vector class that will be useful for simulating the collisions, so I will try to explain those before moving on to the ball-to-ball -ball collision. Now that I have this drawback method in the vector class, I can change where I want to display the velocity and the acceleration vectors by changing the values of the x and the y arguments. So if I go down to the display method of the ball class, then instead of using the coordinates of the ball as arguments, I can use constant numbers like 400 to the y and 550 to the x. And then I will see that these lines that represent the vectors will always start in the same position. And I draw a circle around that point. I copy these lines from the drawball method. And the center will be 550 and 400. And I set the radius to 50. And here the multiplier will be 50 as well. And then I see that the line for the acceleration vector always ends at the edge of that circle but that's actually not true because here i can see that when the acceleration vector is diagonal to the x and the y axis then its magnitude is also larger and that's because the horizontal and the vertical components add up the length of the acceleration vectors horizontal and vertical components will be 1 and 1 and the sum of these two vectors will have the magnitude of square root 2. That's because of the Pythagorean theorem. And that is something I want to fix. So what can I do if I don't want to change the direction of the vector but I want it to have a different magnitude? What I do then is first I create a unit vector and then later I scale it. And the unit vector means that I keep the direction of the vector, but I make the magnitude 1. So here I have an example. I have the vector of 4, 3, and I have a circle with the radius of 1 around the origin of the coordinate system. And if I want to get the unit vector of this 4, 3 vector, then I start going from the origin towards the 4, 3 points. And whenever I reach the edge of this unit circle, that will be the end of the unit vector. So I have the same direction here, but the magnitude of this vector is 1. So how can I calculate the x and the y components of this unit vector? Now let's say I have the magnitude of c, and the values of the horizontal and vertical components are a and b then I can write c equals square root a square plus b square. Now if I want to make this c 1, then I can divide it by c, because c over c is 1, and in that case I divide the other side of the equation by c as well. And I keep modifying this right side of the equation step by step, and at the end I will end up with this expression here. And that shows me that to get a unit vector, I need to divide each component by the magnitude. So in this specific example, a equals 4, b equals 3, and c, which is the magnitude, equals 5. And if I test it, 4 over 5 is 0 0.8, 3 over 5 is 0 0.6. And if I add up the squares of those two values, then I will get 1. And this formula will work for every vector. Dividing each component by the magnitude will result the unit vector of the given vector. And if I know this formula, then implementing this method is not that difficult. I call this method unit. It won't take any argument. And I will divide both of these vectors' components by the vector's magnitude. And those will be the components of the vector that this method returns with.
And now to make sure that I avoid the division by zero, I will make an if statement that if the magnitude of the vector is zero, then I will return with a vector of zero, zero instead. Like that. And now if I go down to the point where the acceleration vector already has a new value, but it hasn't been added to the velocity vector yet. Instead of the acceleration vector, I'm going to use its unit vector to make sure that its magnitude is always 1. And I can test it again, and I can see that the end of the blue line is at the edge of the circle. And that was the goal. If I want this ball to accelerate faster, then I could change the value of the acceleration property, which is here set to 1. I can change it to 3, and it won't move faster. And the reason for that is that instead of just using the unit vector of the acceleration vector, I also need to multiply it by the value of the acceleration property. And I can see now that it's way faster than before, three times faster to be precise, but the blue line is coming out of the circle. So here I do need to use the unit vector to make sure that this vector has the length of 1. And then I multiply it by 50 so that it will end at the edge of the circle. Now I want to change the acceleration back to 1. I like that better. There are two more methods I want to introduce in the vector class. The first one would be creating the normal vector. Normal vector is a unit vector that's perpendicular to the original one. First, to get a perpendicular vector, I need to swap the components and multiply the first one by minus 1, which in this case would mean minus this dot y for the first component and this dot x for the second component. So that's how I do the vector, which is perpendicular and has the same length. And to make it a unit vector, I can call the unit method, which is described here below. And now to test if it's working or not, I go to the display method in the ball class, and I copy this line where I display the acceleration vector, and I use the normal method here. Since it's a unit vector, its magnitude is 1, so I can multiply it by 50, then it will be 50 pixels long. And I display it with a different color, let's say black. And now if I'm moving the ball around, I can see that wherever the blue line is pointing, there is always a black one perpendicular to the blue. So that's how the normal vector works. And there is one more method, the dot product. This will be a static method, which means that it's not called on the instances of the class, but it's called on the class itself. I call it dot and it will take two arguments, two vectors. And this is how it's calculated. It can be calculated in two ways. It can be either the multiplication of the magnitudes of the two vector times the cosinus of the angle between the two vectors. But it can also be calculated by multiplying the x components together and the y components together and then adding them up. And since this expression equals this expression, I can create an equation of these, where the only unknown variable would be the cosinus theta, and that's why dot product can be useful to calculate the angle between two vectors.
but it has an other feature and that's what will be useful for the collision detection or collision response is that if the angle between the two vectors is less than 90 degrees then the value of the dot product is positive and if it's more than 90 degrees then it's negative and when two vectors are at right angles to each other then the dot product is zero so this is what I need to keep in my mind if I wanna take advantage of the dot product so it will return with a scalar number I multiply the x coordinates I multiply the y coordinates with each other and then I add them up together that's how I calculate the dot product and as I said it will be useful for implementing the collisions later but that won't happen in this episode probably in the next one or maybe even later